Among the great rockers of our time, Chris Bedding is a hero. But you've probably never heard of him. Known in England as the consummate studio guitarist, Chris Bedding has worked with such diverse talents as Roger Daltrey, Brian Ferry, Donovan, and Nielsen. He's helped to launch the career of other rockers, like Chrissy Hind of The Pretenders, who sang on an early Spedding solo record. At one point, Mick Jagger even approached Spedding at the time of Mick Taylor's departure from the Rolling Stones. But except for a top ten single in the UK, Spedding has never enjoyed commercial success on his own or with a band. Recently, however, Spedding has begun to broaden his horizons. He appeared in the Paul McCartney movie, Give My Regards to Broad Street, and has begun to write film scores, including the one for Hollywood Vice Squad. And now he's writing a monthly rock music column for Details Magazine. When we caught up with Spedding during a recent club date, we asked him if he has to sacrifice his own musical personality when he plays sessions. Good question, because when I first started playing, of course that was true. I would, ask, I would be asked to fit into whatever it was they had, and I'd be expected to fit in, because I had that reputation of being a session guy. But as time went on, it became more and more that I'd uh, be asked to come and play in a situation which was set up for me, because they wanted me, not just a guitar player, that said, oh yes, we want Chris Spedding for this, and they just get the hold of me. So in the beginning, I had to sort of do a lot of things. And I learned how to do a lot of things, and I learned to sort of forge my own sort of style. During his career, Chris has performed in an amazing variety of styles with a diverse group of musicians. He's played rockabilly with Robert Gordon, Straight ahead rock with Joan Armour trading and punk with the vibrators. In fact, you might say that Chris Bedding is a godfather of new wave music. He produced the first demos made by the Sex Pistols and advised them to soften their blistering approach. I always told him, I said, look, Elvis changed the whole world. He was a total revolutionary musically. And he didn't have to say, uh, uh, anarchy in the UK, God save the Queen, fascist regime. He didn't. Elvis never said that. He looked like he could have said it, but he never did. He said, "Heartbreak Hotel, don't be cruel," but he looked like he was saying those other things, and that's why he never got banned off the television, and that's why he changed the world. I seem to anticipate the trends to my own disadvantage. I'm a little bit too ahead of the game and I, I've, I've gone on to the next thing by the time that trend has come around and I could cash in on it. So as long as I can keep doing that, maybe one time my timing is going to be right and I'll cash in on it, you know? So I don't worry about how I can do that. I'm just glad that I can anticipate.
I'm just, I must be listening to a different drummer or something because I just li see the same thing. I see the same excitement. I see that, you know, just before I met the Sex Pistols, uh, there was a certain excitement that was you, I, we needed in music, you know, and they they had it, and it was obvious to me. And it was just I spoke to loads and loads of record executives about them. And they did not see it at all. So I must be hearing something else that the other people aren't hearing, you know. That's, that's all I can say, and I'm, I mean, I think I'm, I, I prefer what I'm hearing to what they're hearing, that's all. At the moment, Chris Bedding's career is enjoying a boost, with a new solo album in Europe as well as the soundtrack for Hollywood Vice Squad and records by Tom Waits, Mary Ann Faithful, Jerry Harrison, and Robert Gordon highlight his guitar expertise. There's actually a chance that Chris Bedding may become a household word, and we asked him how comfortable he would be as the center of attention. That is a, that is a little strange to get used to, yeah. That's why I'm sort of doing these shows to try and get used to putting it out there myself in the spotlight. Yeah, that's one thing that I... You might say that I've done a lot of things in my career, but that's one thing that I haven't, I've always soft pedaled on, putting myself forward as, as, as the uh, focal point. I'm so used to slotting in with other people's trips that I sometimes forget that I could, you know, do, the, do it myself. And that's probably more the, the more difficult thing that I have to do to go out there and sort of remind myself that I'm the focal point, you know. I can't just take a guitar solo and then sort of look around for a singer to take the the last chorus, you know, oh, it's me, I'm supposed to be singing. <laughs> King of them all now. 